Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Dr. Kyle Explains, your YouTube channel where we go through GCC science content quickly and easily. Today, we're going to be going through the reactivity of the alkali metals. So if you like the sound of that, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, grab a pen of paper, and let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so first of all, some key content for group one. Group one is also known as the alkali metals. They all have similar properties due to having one electron on the outer shell. Their density increases as you go down the group. Their melting points decrease as you go down the group. Okay, so for your GCSE, what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to give some observations and come up with what would react with uh, the group one metals when they react with chlorine, oxygen, and water. So let's have a look at chlorine first, as I've summarized all of this in a table for you. So chlorine, as we know, it's a green gas. And so if you react a group one metal with chlorine, the green gas would disappear. A bright light would be given off and some heat would also be given off. You may also see a white solid form because of uh, the group one reacting with the chlorine gas. Now, what you would make would be a metal chloride. So for example, if you reacted potassium with chlorine, you would make potassium chloride. In the example of the formula, I've used sodium. So you would make sodium chloride, NaCl. Now let's look at oxygen. So for oxygen, you would probably form a bright light again. Heat would be given off and the outer surface of the metal would probably become darker. And that would be the oxide forming on the outer layer of the group one metal. Now, what you would make would be a metal oxide, as we just briefly mentioned there. And so again, using sodium as an example, what you would make would be sodium oxide, Na2O. Now, if you're wondering why you have Na2O instead of uh, the previous example, when it was just one sodium, one, one chlorine, it's because chlorine is in group seven, so it can only take one extra electron, hence the reason NaCl. And in the case of oxygen, it's in group six, so it gains two electrons. And so therefore you need two sodiums to give two electrons to the oxygen. Hence the formula is Na2O. We'll go over this in a further video. Okay, so looking at water now, what you would observe with the group one metals, they would all fizz and they would all move. Now, the reason for this is because they would all form hydrogen gas. Now, you can't say they form hydrogen gas as an observation because you can't physically see hydrogen. What you would see is fizzing. And the reason it moves is because it's gliding around on a layer of hydrogen gas. Because they have low melting points and the reaction is exothermic, you would uh, see the um, group one metal melting quite quickly. And it would also be floating because the densities of them is relatively low. Now, specifically, you need to know that sodium forms a silver ball. And for potassium, you need to know that it forms a lilac flame. What you would make would be a metal hydroxide. And so if you dropped rubidium in water, you would make rubidium hydroxide. In the example of sodium, it would be sodium hydroxide. And the formula of that would be NaOH. OH is your hydroxide, Na for sodium. Okay, so just to summarize this a little bit more, I thought it would be good to write some equations of the reactions uh, that we've just been through. So first of all, sodium plus chlorine, Na plus Cl2 goes to two NaCl. And remember to balance those equations, you need two sodiums and two NaCls. Now, if you're not confident with balancing equations, please do check out my other videos as I will be doing one on balancing equations. In the case of oxygen, Sodium plus oxygen would make sodium oxide, Na2O. And again, you need four sodiums and two lots of Na2O to balance this equation. Finally, we've got sodium plus water, H2O, forms NaOH, sodium hydroxide, plus hydrogen gas. Now, all of these reactions would be the same for whichever group one metal you choose. So, I thought I'd give you a quick example down here at the bottom for you to have a go at. Pause the video now and see if you can work out what is formed. Okay, so hopefully we've recognized then you would form KOH, potassium hydroxide, and H2, hydrogen. And then again, we have got one, two, three hydrogens on here, and one, two hydrogens here. So I'm going to put a two 
over here, I've now got four hydrogens. And so therefore, I'm going to put a two in front of here to get one, two, three, four hydrogens now. That gives me two oxygens, which I've now got. And so finally, I need to put a two in front of the potassium to balance my equation. Really well done if you got that right. Okay, so what we need to look at now is the trend in reactivity. Trend means pattern. So the reactivity of group one metals they is that they get more reactive going down the group. Okay, so the pattern is that they are getting more reactive going down the group like this. So looking at sodium and potassium as examples here, we can use this as an example to see and explain why this is. Now I'd like you to remember these three letters, D, F, and E. This stands for distance, force, and electron. And we're going to summarize this in our answer below. Okay, so first of all, potassium has more energy levels. And so hopefully we can see we've got one, two, three, four energy levels here compared to sodium's one, two, three. So there is a greater distance, tick, between the outer electron and the positive nucleus compared to sodium. So what that means is that nucleus in the middle here, the distance between here and here is larger than between here and here. And so that means the force of attraction is weaker in potassium, tick, we've spoken about force. And so here, all it means is that this electron, this negative charge, is getting a less uh, of a, a force of attraction from the positive nucleus. Sometimes this is known as electron shielding. And so essentially the force of attraction is much weaker now. And so therefore it is easier for potassium to lose an electron. Tick. And so what we've described here is we've described why potassium is more reactive. It is easier for potassium to lose its electron than it is for sodium to lose its electron, thus making potassium more reactive. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is give you a question now. Pause the video, see if you can uh, use the method that we've just done previously to explain why group one metals get more reactive as you go down the group. So I've just slightly changed the question. Use your letters D, F, E again to see if we can explain why group one metals get more reactive going down the group. Usually about three marks. Pause the video now and then I'll go through the answer. Okay, great. So hopefully the first thing we said is that as you move down the group, the elements or the alkali metals, we could say, alkali metals have more energy levels always start with that first sentence and so now we're going to start talking about dfe distance force electron so the distance between the positive nucleus and outer electron becomes greater the further down you go. Tick, we've spoken about our distance. Therefore, and let's think about what happens to the force of attraction. Therefore, the force of attraction becomes weaker tick so it becomes oh messed up a little bit there becomes easier to lose an electron. Perfect. 
You keep this strategy in place for explaining why the group metals become more reactive as you go down, I'm absolutely certain you will hit top marks in your GCSE. Now a slight warning, make sure you are being very specific about what you are talking about. In this example we've just gone through, we're talking about the group one metals in general. If it asks you for specifically two elements, make sure you are talking about those elements. So for example, if it said why is um, sodium more reactive than lithium, make sure you're explaining that sodium has more energy levels than lithium. So the distance for um, sodium is greater, etc. It is easier for sodium to lose the electron. Okay, really well done if you got marks there. Okay, so what we've achieved today then is we've started to look and describe the electronic structures of the metals. Now we haven't done non-metals today, but we have done for the metal and we've linked it for reactivity. We've also described the properties and the trends of the alkali metals and written the equations for their reactions with water. Thank you very much for watching. Please do go through my other videos for more GCSE science content. And remember, if you ever need any help with GCSE science, Dr. Kyle explains. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.